Good morning. My name is uh, Jonathan Aroff, call sign Gremlin. We're standing in front of the T-38 Charlie here at uh, EA Oshkosh Air Venture 2024. Uh, I've been flying the T-38 uh, on and off for about the last 15 years and I got about 14, 000, or 1,400 hours uh, in the aircraft. Uh, pretty unique livery that this airplane has. Uh, it's a uh, the airplane's owned by the 586 Flight Test Squadron out of Holloman Air Force Base. Uh, they have a heritage going back to World War II and D-Day. So if, when you, we walk around the airplane, you'll notice some of the unique uh, things on it, including the D-Day invasion stripes. <clears throat> One of the first things I'm always asked uh, about the T-38 is honestly the, uh, the intakes. A little bit different shape than what you would have seen on the traditional A model uh, or a legacy aircraft. Uh, in the early 2000s, we did a program called the Propulsion Modernization Program, or PMP. What we did was the the older intakes came more to a point, they were a little smaller intake, uh, and uh, the Air Force decided that they wanted more low altitude performance. So <clears throat> we opened up the intakes and we also changed the exhaust a little bit. Greatly improve, improved uh, thrust at low altitude, but also uh, single engine performance in case uh, we were to lose an engine. Uh, this little thing sticking out in front of the engine, uh, that is a boundary layer separator so that we can separate the, the turbulent air that's coming across the fuselage and get nice clean air uh, into the intake. <clears throat> Along the side of the airplane, uh, the crew has a method of getting in and out of the airplane if there aren't uh, stairs available. So these fold up real nice uh, and then once we do a walk around of the airplane, I'll actually demo how the pilots get in and out of the aircraft. Coming along the uh, left side, uh, this is the emblem for the 586 that they used uh, during the World War II campaign. So again, paying homage to uh, the service members that have come before us. Off to the side, down in here, it's where they can service the locks, the liquid oxygen. Uh, it's what the pilots use for supplemental oxygen uh, to make sure that they don't get hypoxic at higher altitude. Uh, nose gear, pretty uh, standard. Look, uh, one mile nose gear. Uh, this little extension is kind of a neat thing. Uh, we'll talk about the arresting gear system that uh, some pilot training bases have. Uh, but this little horn is supposed to catch a cable that'll launch a bigger cable that'll ho hook onto the landing gear to help slow us down in the case of we lose brakes at the end of the runway. Uh, this tube right here is a temperature probe. It allows us to. Uh, compensate the aerodynamics of the airplane uh, for our instrumentation based off the outside air temperature. Uh, to the dismay of uh, 10 year olds everywhere, I don't have a laser on the nose of the aircraft. Uh, this is actually our pitot boom. Uh, it gives us uh, the ability to know what our uh, free stream velocity is or our airspeed uh, throughout the flight regime. We just keep it covered to keep bugs and critters out from underneath it. Uh, the candy striping on it is just basically to make sure that uh, you can see it and you uh, don't hit your head on it. One of the cool things about the T-38 is it has this uh, AOA uh, vein on it. Most modern airplanes have uh, AOA as an indicator to see what you're on, if you're on speed for anything from approach, uh, making sure that you're uh, energy neutral during aerobatics or uh, long range uh, cruise or uh, uh, endurance profiles. Uh, so we can teach our uh, air crew when they're starting off when they're students that uh, AOA is very important and that we don't just fly air speeds. Off to the side, uh, in here, I won't open up this panel, but that's how we can jettison uh, the canopies in case of emergency, so a ground crew can open this panel, pull a handle, and get out toward us. Uh, looking underneath the airplane, uh, you'll see these two big flat plates. Uh, these are the air brakes. They're controlled by the, both the front and a rear cockpit. Um, and I, one of the questions I always get is, how does the T-38 differ from uh, the F-5? And that's gonna be the size of those plates. What you see under here, these are, are gear doors. These will close once I put power on the airplane. Uh, we just open them up on landing uh, to make a visual inspection of the area easier and for maintenance crews to get inside uh, and inspect what they need to. On the right side, uh, here's the tire. Uh, one of the questions I always get is, hey, are you afraid flying with those cords showing? And absolutely not. That's totally normal for us. On uh, the side of the tires, it tells us how many cords uh, we can be showing. Uh, and that's something we inspect for every time. Now, if you remember at the nose of the airplane, I mentioned that little hook for the arresting gear. Uh, this little tab uh, is something I always get asked about. That is where the bigger cable that's actually going to slow us down hooks onto this. Um, so it's a arresting gear system. One of the more important things uh, during a walk around on the T-38 is actually this panel right here. And you can see there's like a little bubble showing. Uh, we actually tap that. And what we're listening for is any loose items. Um, that is uh, where the aileron actuator is. And so we want to make sure that uh, 
none of the nuts or bolts have come loose. Now, one of the things I'm always asked about, again, is the size of the wing. Uh, this wing is really small, uh, and Eric, if you want to get on the side, you can see just how skinny she is. Um, the intent was in the 1950s is that flying high performance aircraft was very difficult, specifically airplanes like the F-104, uh, who had very high final approach speeds. So the Air, Air Force asked uh, industry to develop an airplane that was can train people specifically for the task of uh, flying Century Series fighters. So. They came out with the T-38, <clears throat> has a high final approach speed somewhere about 160 plus knots depending on our configuration, uh, with a saw speed somewhere in about 130. Um, so it was a really good trainer uh, when we talked about aircraft like the Century Series fighters or uh, earlier fighters. Uh, along the airplane, we do have uh, ailerons on each side and individual flaps. Uh, the flaps typically have three settings, uh, up, 60% uh, and 100%. 60% we use for takeoff and generally speaking 100% uh, for most landings. Uh, we can land in the no flap configuration as well, but we have to land about 15 to 20 knots faster. Uh, that's how much lift these uh, little flaps provide. Along the side, uh, we have a visual inspection to see what the level of the hydraulics are throughout the aircraft. And uh, you'll notice here we have uh, a way for firefighters to be able to put um, uh, water into the engine compartment if we need to. And then right behind that is our oil filler cap. Uh, we check that before every flight to make sure we have enough uh, oil to fly the sortie. Now the T-38 is supersonic capable. Uh, I've taken it over 1.1 Mach, which is pretty fast for considering she was built in the 1960s. Uh, this is actually a 63 model. You can tell by the uh, little 6.3 underneath the AF on the tail. Uh, so being that it's a supersonic fighter uh, or fighter type, uh, the horizontal stabilizer is all moving. So this entire uh, piece will move and it pivots around this aft uh, hinge point. One of the nice things about the T-38 is uh, when we normally fly it, we put our feet on the floor. Uh, that's because we have such a big vertical stabilizer that we and little skinny wings that adverse yaw isn't really a thing for us. Um, not only that, but the T-38 in the gear down configuration, we get a lot of rudder authority, probably more than we need at times. Uh, so as a safety feature, as to not over control the rudder, most pilots will fly with their feet on the floor. So the rudder movement changes when the gear up and gear down configuration. All right, the burner cans on the, uh, we call them the PMP airplanes, are the ones that have been through the propulsion modernization program, um, have a different ejector or nozzles than what you would see on your earlier aircraft. So uh, the pre-PMP ones basically had a smooth uh, tail section. Uh, they added uh, features uh, to the tail section to make, uh, as, like I said, improve the low altitude performance of the airplane. So these uh, little flaps are uh, completely passive and they uh, move with the differential pressure between the outside and the inside of the engine. Uh, probably a pretty good shot. You can look through the uh, exhaust cans. Uh, the afterburner is pretty effective. It almost doubles the thrust output of the engine, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, and uh, we actually take off in full afterburner. And then I'll just point out that this part of the afterburner right here, that's the variable nozzle. So it'll open and close uh, to optimize the thrust of the aircraft. <clears throat> Moving along, uh, we're going to pop underneath the airplane here, um, but one of the biggest limitations on the T-38 of where we can go is our lack of self-start capability. So we normally require a huffer cart or an air cart to pump air through the engine to get it spinning to start it for us. Um, so that was a design choice uh, in the 50s. You know, uh, jet engines were still fairly new and, and having that self-start capability was gonna add a lot of weight um, and uh, not necessarily the reliability they were looking for. So they just elected to always have an external start cart to start us. Likewise, uh, we have the ability to connect external power. So if we wanna really make sure that uh, we set up our avionics and not burn the f little gas that we do have, uh, we can put external power on the airplane and, and start running the avionics before we start the engines. Uh, it's a good time to point out the, the invasion stripes, again, pointing out to the, the uh, livery of the airplane, uh, dating back to the 586's time uh, during D-Day and World War II. What is that scoop for? Uh, the scoop is just for cooling of the engine bay. <clears throat> we'll also see on the tail, HT, 
Uh, that's for Holloman test. The airplane is based out of Holloman Air Force Base, uh, where the 586 does flight test. Now, they don't necessarily support any one MWS or major weapon system. Uh, their job is to support uh, uh, emerging technologies and general tests, and we'll show you some of the neat features of the airplane to do that, or how they do that here in a second. So anytime we see bright orange on an airplane, uh, that normally means it's for flight test and it's not production representative and it is not uh, in a fleet configuration. So if you notice underneath the airplane, we have this uh, orange painted MAL-12. Um, it's a different uh, assembly or mechanism to get onto the airplane or to attach things to the airplane. Again, that's very test specific. And hanging underneath that is a, a thing we call the Agile Pod. The Agile Pod is a test specific uh, piece of equipment where we're able to fly small all emerging technologies uh, before we're ready to integrate them in the airplane. So it's a way to reduce the cost and barrier uh, of entry into flight test and put experiments in the flight test environment. Uh, so for example, uh, one of the recent programs we did was looking at uh, fiber optic cables as a method to use them for measuring strain, stress and strain on objects. So the way we typically used to do it, or how we do it now, is we put strain gauges at very discrete points along the fuselage, and each one of those strain gauges has to be individually um, wired up for power and telemetry. With uh, fiber optics, we might be able to put one cable out the entire uh, swing span or along the uh, span of the aircraft and measure at a, a, almost an infinite number of points the uh, different stresses and strains that the aircraft is going under using infer interferometry uh, or how much the light wavelengths change uh, throughout that uh, length of the thing. So we just did a, 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 was a successful test with that. We were partnered I think with NASA, AFRL and the 586 on that and test pilot school. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, I'll kind of demo how pilots get in the back seat or back in the front seat and then uh, we'll get you looking over the side. So, uh, kind of have to be a little bit of a gymnast to do this in the real world, but you step up, over, and then it's just a hop, skip, and a jump uh, into the aircraft. Uh, getting out, likewise, uh, you can just hop from one peg to the other if you were the student pilot to climb into the T-38. So T-38, um, one of the nice things is the ejection seats have been modified. This is the Martin Baker uh, Mark 16 seat. Uh, so uh, back in the A model days, they would have to carry their parachute on their back uh, and use a uh, very different system. It's a zero zero seat. It's quite uh, reliable and it's a little bit more comfortable than having to have carry the weight of the parachute on your back. So with that, we were able to integrate a harness. Um, normally we put the harness on outside. I just have it here for uh, Oshkosh demo. Walking around the cockpit, <clears throat> uh, you'll see it looks old in a couple places. That's because it not everything was updated uh, with it, but pretty standard. We have our throttle quadrant here uh, with our flap uh, switch here. Uh, you'll see that we have a backup control panel. So, for example, this is for the TACAN. Um, we have our flap gauge and then our intercom and all our volume knobs. Uh, pretty standard uh, gear configuration uh, and then for training uh, combat aviators, right, this is not just an airplane we go out and have fun with, uh, we instill in the students um, that they have to maintain their switches in the correct configuration. So we have a master arm and uh, countermeasures on switch. Uh, the students will typically do that every time they're getting into a, the working airspace or between uh, fights. Uh, when they're doing uh, IFF and BFM. So while we don't carry bombs or missiles on the T-38, we want to instill uh, those switch, that switch discipline from the students very on. Uh, standard uh, Air Force, uh, we call them peanut gauges, but uh, standby gauges, uh, so that if we were to lose all our avionics, um, we can still make it home and even through the weather. Uh, the C model upgrade uh, really boiled down to uh, an avionics upgrade. So this piece right here, this is called the MFD. On it, you'll have your, your kind of your standard six-pack instruments. You have your ADI, HSI, airspeed, altitude, G, and AOA. So some nice features. And then on the bottom, we can also pull up a moving map. Now I can't necessarily overlay like a sectional on it. It's lines off of uh, that we program in, but it's a big improvement over you know having to do pie in the sky uh, to maintain area orientation. Above that, this is the upfront control panel, the UFCD, and uh, on it is how we 
do most of our interaction with the avionics. So we have a, a full uh, keyboard that allows us to type in, for example, IK waypoints when we go cross country. And then it's also how we control our uh, weapons, our simulated weapons, and the uh, radios as well. And then on the far right, um, this panel, the EED, it's for uh, our engine display panel. Um, if you looked at the A model gauges, they're very similar uh, in display, but the big difference is now they're digital uh, and we also have digital readouts. The hydraulic switches have remained the same and then we have our master warning caution panel uh, as well so that can give us our indicator lights of different failure modes of the airplane. Uh, canopy jettison handle, uh, so if we wanted to just jettison the canopy and not have to jump out of the airplane, it's there. And then just above those is the backup uh, control heads for the uh, UHF radio and our navigational system. Then moving around the right side of the cockpit, <clears throat> that looks pretty all normal. Uh, from here aft, we have some flight test equipment that uh, doesn't really apply to the standard T-38, but they had a, a different IFF mode available for it. Uh, this big black uh, handle, that's how we open and lower the canopy, so uh, that's all done manually. Uh, let's see, the ejection seat has some neat features, um, so these are, these leg garters uh, will go around, in this case this lower one, around our ankle, and then we have another one here that goes around our thigh, and the idea is that these are going to bring our legs in and tuck them underneath us as we go. Uh, out the top of, or excuse me, as we uh, exit the aircraft. So the standard ejection seat position is the legs all the way out, and the idea is we're trying to reduce the distance between our femur and the seat itself. Uh, to safe and arm the seat, we have a lever right here. All we do is pinch that guy and bring it down. Um, we currently have the seat safe with a pin, so this lever won't move. And then uh, the actual ejection mechanism is this uh, yellow and black striped handle. So just one little handle. Uh, to get us out of the aircraft if we need to. So that's basically the T-38. So I appreciate you coming along with me for this journey. And uh, from Oshkosh 2024, have a great day.